Here we got uh, John Anderson at the Flying Penguin, and he's going to give us the story of the alarm. Hello, Americans. I'm John Anderson. On October 7th, 2011, I locked my front door and left to go to church, St. John's, on uh, Rod Street. At approximately 5.30, a lady came up, grabbed my door, started yanking on it, and then opened it. She didn't know what to do. She called the police. They came up locked my door for me and nothing was said. After that, the police told me everything was under control. I checked the premises later. Everything was fine. October 11th, I received a letter about my alarm activation notice stating that I had a false alarm up here and the police had to inquire about it. It also told me I need a permit to operate an alarm and it told me what I need to do, who I need to go and see. This young lady down here named Lisa Bulky, I can see her at 710 South Front Street between the hours of 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. I need to get a license to have my permit, or a permit to have my alarm. At 710 South Front Street, as we know, is a large building with a nine-foot high fence around this keep out. There are cranes, dump trucks, and all kinds of construction going on. However, all this should be moot because as we look at the police report here, date of the 8th, you will see the first thing on here on the alarm report is no alarm. But yet in great detail, they have told me about how I have violated the alarm policy in many different ways. I, of course, chose to ignore this, assuming that the city would be wise enough to determine that they had made the mistake. And you could read that plain as day that there was a no alarm written on the police report. <coughs> All that goes until on November 30th, I received this certified letter. Coincidentally postmarked, as we can see, 1128. Letter was, of course, written on 1123, <coughs> seven days earlier, by Miss Belkey informing me my Alarm privileges have been suspended immediately. I must now pay them $50 to have my alarm permit uh, reinstated. And if I do not, I can be subject to a crime of a misdemeanor. Also, I am now on low priority, meaning that the city of Mankato is out there arresting 19-year-olds for drinking and eating cats out of trees. Should some terrorist come and pull a gun on me, I will be at the very bottom of their list. However, I disagree with this. I can call the city manager. Pat Henches, and he will, you know, listen to my grievances, and his decision is final. I then at 4.02 on November 30th called Mr. Henches and did not receive a phone call back. Two days later on Friday, I found out that Mr. Henches was indeed out hunting. Good for him. And he was not going to return my call because he was out of the office. <clears throat> During that day, um, I gave my story to another person, who then relayed all the information to someone above him, at which point Public Safety Director Todd Miller then informed me that yes, in fact, he had found this, heard this, saw this, and was now going to take care of it. He informed me that yes, there was a problem with it, and that the first problem was the police officer should not have used an alarm activation form. The police officer should have uh, used a different one. And record keeping were actually the people who should have noticed this also and should not have sent me the letter. He assured me I was now going to be put back on the normal schedule for any calls that may happen here and let me know that things were now taken care of. No apology necessary, apparently. Today, December 6, 2012, I received a phone call from City Manager Pat Henches to inquire he had got my telephone call on November 30th and wanted to see how things were going. I informed him what had happened. He uh, said, yes, he was in fact out of the office. I said, yes, I hope your hunting trip went well. He said, it had. He shot lots of pheasants. Yes, he needs to do that. That is how it all ended.